Many things we do in academia require taking a long-term perspective. Like you have an idea, you write a grant, you get it funded, you employ people, you set up experiments, you run the experiment, you measure things in the lab, you analyze data, you write the manuscript, you submit the manuscript, you get the manuscript reviewed, and eventually you get it published and you can feel that moment of joy. Now, all of this takes a lot of time and requires that you have the ability to deal with this delayed gratification. Now, this is important to do and important to deal with, and it starts from your PhD, your postdoc, and it's still important to me now as a faculty member. But it's also hard to deal with. And so here are the things that I do to better cope with the situation of this very delayed gratification. And I'd really love to hear from you what you do to cope with this. So let me know in the comments. So the first thing that I do, and I've started doing this a couple of years ago, and I really enjoyed a lot, is put immediate ideas that I have in the form of an opinion, viewpoint, or perspective paper. They can be relatively fast to write, and it still takes time, and it's still a lot of effort, but compared to setting up an experiment and going through the whole process of an experimental study, it's much quicker. And most importantly, the product in the form of that paper is going to be taking shape like almost immediately, right? You have an idea, you can write it down, put it into words, flesh it out, you invite some co-authors to add their perspective, and so a product can materialize relatively quickly. And also note that this is different from writing a full-blown review paper or even a meta-analysis. These are, you know, shorter pieces and they have, I think, saved me because um, I, I like to have my own products and I can produce these in a, in a reasonable amount of time and have that feeling that I achieved something that I have also real ownership of. So I think writing these um, opinion perspective papers, whatever you want to call them, commentaries, they are a really great option to escape that waiting and waiting for a product to emerge from the more traditional things that we do, which is experimental work. Now, of course, what's also super important, also from a more research strategy perspective, is to not just do one thing at a time, right? So, I mean, one of the ways you can have multiple moments of joy regularly occurring is that you have multiple things going on. They're staggered, right? So while you may be thinking about an experiment to be set up, you have another one running and you're analyzing the data or writing the manuscript for yet another one. So basically you, once you're of course established in a certain position or once you're at a at more advanced stage in your PhD studies, for example, you should be having multiple uh, studies running in parallel. Multiple experiments, but also a mixture of things, because that ensures that you have a continuity of output and a continuity of these moments of joy when a product basically emerges. Now, the next thing is have these famous side projects. You know, maybe they're not these full-blown designs with thousands of experimental units or field experiments that take forever to set up. But maybe they are just a couple of pots of plants or a couple of soil samples where you try out something, some exploratory studies. Now they are really quick to set up generally and they lead to results in a relatively short period of time as well. And they can then give you this moment of joy or the moment of uh, at least feeling that you have accomplished something and closed something uh, also relatively quickly. And of course, they can be very important because this is the way you try out new things and new ideas. Right? So they have a different purpose from those, let's say, thesis chapter type things. If you're a PhD student or the project that you work on as a postdoc, or your research program if you're a faculty, but you know they serve a different purpose like exploring new things, just trying things out. And they can also give you results relatively quickly. Now they also <laughs> is of course a danger with them because they, because they are so new and exciting and shiny, um, they may be actually a distraction from your real project, so you can't let it come to that. But I think it is still important to have these little things that excite you always going on because they can give you these moments of joy and achievement. Now, as I mentioned, these big projects that sometimes span years 
from conception of the idea to the finished manuscript, basically, um, you, you can break these things down into more bite-sized pieces. And this is absolutely essential because if you don't break it down into little personal milestones, it also may seem just overwhelming, right? So it's important that you, you come up with milestones that are, that are meaningful for you. I don't mean milestones like in a grand proposal writing kind of context, just meaningful things for you. Like I've set up this experiment or I've completed this analysis for that particular response variable and then to celebrate that, right? So you have, a, you have an achievement, you have broken down your huge task into more bite-sized manageable pieces and you celebrate the completion of each of these pieces. This is also, um, I think, an important psychological trick to give you these moments of joy and gratification. Well, you could also have other types of products than manuscripts that give you this feeling of accomplishment. So for example, I make TikToks or, or YouTube videos and, and they are also still a lot of effort, but <laughs> I mean, they, they give you results and also feedback and the sense of having finished a product relatively quickly compared to many of the other things we do. So this may also be an option for you if you're interested in that sort of thing. And these can of course be other things like writing blog posts or engaging in outreach activities, giving workshops and things like that where you get more immediate feedback and a sense of accomplishment than the typical long-term projects. And then of course activity on social media that epitomize basically instant gratification. Um, you write a post, you see does it get likes, does it get retweeted, retweeted does it get um, answers, for example, if you're on, on Twitter or Instagram or other things like that. This is, of course, the ultimate in instant gratification. Again, this can be super useful. It can be a source of information. It can be a source of inspiration and ideas and also a very important networking tool. This is all very positive and I believe you should do that. However, it's also important to recognize that this can be a source of distraction and it can also be um, a source of feeding your insecurities by looking at what other people accomplish all the time. So it's important to you know do it all in moderation and to watch what you're doing and to curate your feed and if you're interested in that for Twitter I have a, a video where I tell you to do that. So I think social media are important because they also give you this sense of accomplishment fairly quickly or an, at least an instant gratification, an instant feedback for example to an idea or a thought that you have and I like that very much. But, you know, use it in moderation and use it sensibly. So this is what I do. This is my list of things that I do to deal with this problem of having to wait for long until you get some feedback or until you have a sense of accomplishment, the normal scientific process that we're all engaged in. And I'd love to hear from you what you do. So let me know in the comments. And with that, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.